Hi everybody, my name is Brandon, as you just heard, and uh, I work as a researcher with Marlon Schumacher uh, in Karlsruhe. And today we are presenting two tools for computer-assisted composition, uh, which incorporate a few classic machine learning methods. The first tool uh, drives a sample replacement engine, so it detects transients, classifies them, and then replaces them with audio, uh, other audio samples. And then the second tool is a texture synthesis patch uh, that can sort and organize large amounts of audio based around a single parameter or multiple parameters. The machine learning methods I won't go too deeply into probably because of time, but the sample replacement is using a k-nearest neighbors classification method and the texturing synth texture synthesis patch is using a k-means clustering algorithm. Um, something I want to emphasize is that these tools are not presenting tasks or techniques that are necessarily new to the machine learning world. They're actually in some ways classic, classification with KNN or clustering with k-means. But something we wanted to do is to build these in a very modular and extendable way. These tools are built basically as open music patches where each step of the analysis, machine learning, organization, synthesis process is its own little abstraction patch, which a user could replace with their own or edit. For example, you see in this figure, this is our kind of audio analysis engine where it pulls audio descriptors and the descriptor that I use for a lot of the demonstrations is MFCCs, but if you want to use a different descriptor, fundamental pitch, centroid, duration even, um, that's all possible. Basically went over the agenda. Uh, there's also a composition example, some of my own work that we'll get to if there's time at the end. Uh, so let's go to the sample replacement. Um, forgive me if it's loud. I can't control actually the volume from my computer, but this, this is some audio that we will demo. It's a drum beat. It loops. Uh, and first, we take the transients. Uh, I do this by taking spectral data. Right now, it's just kind of generalizing the whole spectral data to get general amplitudes, but I think that this patch brings possibilities of also targeting specific parts of the spectrum for pulling transients, which could be useful for polyphonic transcription in the future. Uh, of course, that this needs to be converted from just time markers to actual, what is this? What are we trying to classify? This is the machine learning, this is the classification method at work, which is basically uh, analyzing and describing the audio as some numbers that describe it. You can see at the top, that's our audio, it's trimmed, and then it's we have a little vector that describes some values such as the centroid, the spectral difference, or the MFCCs. And then that data is compared against uh, a set of training data. And for my purposes in this demonstration, the training data I gave was a group of drum samples that I had labeled as this is a group of cymbals, this is a group of snare drums, this is a group of toms. And because I gave those terms, those are the terms by which the program classifies my data. So now my data, my drum loop has been transcribed by drum type, but if I, for my training set, had given a bunch of orchestra sounds, one of which was drum sounds, that would be a new sort of set of terms for the program to classify my audio, and then it would just be one line that would say these are drum sounds. Uh, in Open Music, we bring this into a maquette, which allows us to edit everything on the audio level. This is the same drum loop that we heard earlier, but now replaced with a single new replacement set of samples.
these are tools for computer assisted composition. So uh, within the patch, they're in this score object. There's of course the opportunity to change what the rhythm is, what or what what the content is that has been classified, and that can be done before the replacement process. So what you just heard was the top sound, and uh, here is the sort of same replacement action, but done to a edited score. In addition to controlling the symbolic data of the classification, it's also possible to control the process by which the sound samples are implemented. The previous examples you've heard is when uh, this transcription is replaced by a single sample set, but uh, who's to say, why not use more sample sets? Um, and so there is well, I'll demonstrate that first with an example and then speak briefly on how that works. This is, uh, I'll get into this at the end. It's, it, we use functions, breakpoint functions in open music to control that kind of interpolation, which allows us to have any number of sample sets sort of in our mix at once. We don't need to reprogram with new probability vectors if we have three sample sets or four sample sets or uh, 40,000 sample sets. Um, I think I'll move on to I spoke a little bit already about how the classification method works. It's also it's one of maybe like one of the first things one learns in a kind in this kind of Machine learning, very uh, wikipedia uh, you could say. Um, but our second tool is a texture synthesis patch. Um, for our demonstration, I'll present just sort of like a bunch of audio, like just random stuff I found on my computer. It's, and uh, I've labeled it for this purpose by sound type roughly, but I don't know what harmonics these violin harmonics are. I don't know uh, what harmonic content spectral content are in these multiphonics, and I could just as easily have a bunch of unlabeled data in there. And once again, we analyze that, we reduce that audio to a set of <coughs> vectors with numerical information describing the audio, and then we plot it in an array. And what this array allows us to do is to give us um, a kind of overview, a kind of map of what I am looking at with the, all the audio I've just seen. And for texture synthesis, I find that this is useful as a way of kind of sorting and perhaps even controlling large amount of audio around a parameter of my choice. So for example, uh, we have here, if you can read it, one of those descriptors is the spectral centroid. And if I ordered, all these sounds by sorting by spectral centroid, you would hear a kind of progression of moving from one centroid to another. What does that sound like? Well, you can find out it's not, it's not as simple as just hearing things gliss upwards um, like other sort of pitch-based descriptors. Um, but the sort of machine learning method that's inserted into this is a clustering method and Maybe I'll show just a little bit of some audio before I go into that. Um, once again, we have a bunch of this audio. It's sent into this array. And then I just had it sort. You can see here it's sorted by cluster ID, by clusters. So it plays one cluster, then the next cluster, then the next cluster. Uh, and this is what came out. Clustering 
A k-means clustering method in machine learning is where the algorithm is presented with a bunch of data points. You can see by the graph on the left that to the computer is completely unlabeled, unorganized, not annotated in any sort of way. And then through its uh, algorithmness uh, determines that this is a grouping. This, let's put a circle here, let's group here, let's group it around. Let's make three groups and these are the three groups. And in this patch, uh, you can see by uh, the number two clustering, this is how you determine how many clusters you want. And it will just sort of gives the computer the task, group this audio. And the reason I find this noteworthy, in addition to all the other descriptors that the texture synthesis can sort by, is that say you have five different instruments and you ask it to make five groups. Well, those groups will be along the instrument. You'll have a group of one instrument, group of the other, but if you have five, a group of five instruments and you say make four groups, now the computer <coughs> is tasked with making a, dish, uh, a boundary line between these sounds that is maybe not the boundary line that I created with the five groups. And therefore it becomes, I would say that this is where it becomes more of a creative tool, more of a composition tool. The, the way it groups that is not so precise or controllable. Uh, it's also not random, but the clustering algorithm gives you a slightly different result each time you run it. <clears throat> and so I find the way one can iterate their patch in open music several times to see what results comes out fits well for this kind of approach. Um, yeah, and it's made in a maquette. I'll also say if you're like very technical in open music or I, I included a, um, on one hand, you can sort everything and sort of algorithmically generate it in the maquette space, but then there's also an opportunity to just click and drag individual sounds. I like the idea of um, putting your fingerprints on the things that you make to, to use that as a kind of metaphor. And so these dark green boxes are like my fingerprints saying like, yeah, I think that these other sounds would punctuate, <coughs> punctuate my uh, texture nicely. There's a one minute left, so uh, I had the opportunity to write a companion piece for uh, John Cage's Sonatas and Interludes. Um, here's 20 seconds of it. One compositional idea behind making the companion piece is that there's a lot of fixation on the sounds in John Cage's prepared, um, prepared piano pieces, uh, but he was also very concerned with form and duration, and so I wanted to take account of that too in the piece, and so I'm sorting, uh, I'm clustering all several thousand sonorities that occur in that hour-long piece, um, and then kind of took the, the shortest ones and some of the ones that I found the most harmonically bright, those seem to all kind of cluster around uh, particular groups. And I took those groups and used them as not like a tone row, but a, but a sequence of notes. And then I cleaned, oh, oh that's, that's what it sounds like. That's like what open music spat out. And then I, you know, my fingerprints, I, I composed then uh, and, and cleaned out or sort of carved out spaces in that sequence. So these are the tools. These are some of my ideas. Uh, I think there's a lot of room for improvement and steps forward. And I'm curious to hear your guys' thoughts and feedback on that as well. I appreciated the presentation before as well. I felt like this is a totally applicable sort of thing that could be integrated here. So um, yeah, I can open things up for questions and, and such. Thank you.